go and talk now to Nigel Pawley, who is a media commentator. Good morning to you. Morning, David. How Day are you? I I'm good, thank you very much. Day six of the crisis at the BBC. I've been talking about it every single day. It just gets worse, I think. We've now got this second young person uh, coming forward. The extraordinary allegations there. Also, the Prime Minister now wading into this debate. We've now heard about this alleged breach of lockdown. Also, the development, and this happened uh, sort of late last night, we now understand. And so we were reporting that actually the parents went to the BBC first but actually it now transpires that the parents went to the police first in April now in terms of the police they they found at that point we don't know which is the police force involved they said there was no criminal investigation that took place they didn't see any evidence of criminality but Tim Davey tried to respond and refute this what did you make of what he said yesterday and also what does the future look like for the BBC in terms of what will happen today tomorrow and the rest of the week well, the pressure's growing. Tim Davey was in a difficult situation because, yes, he should know more, and he admitted he hadn't spoken to the presenter, but if it was an HR matter and the investigation, then obviously he wouldn't necessarily be um, in, in, in involved in discussions, but with the seriousness of it, he should have been. Uh, what holds the BBC? More problems. I think there's going to be more allegations coming out. Um, this encapsulates to me. I'm not sure about politicians getting involved. I'm not sure. I think Rishi Sunak discussing lockdown breaches and some of the sex scandals with what politicians have been doing in the House of Commons. I think politicians should possibly let the police and BBC investigate this. Let the, you know, let the, let him who was about sin cast the first stone on, on that. So I'm not interested in in politicians. What is happening? The, the, the police are now looking back at this. But for me, this whole situation for the last six days encapsulates everything that is wrong with Britain at the moment. We've had the son versus the son. We've had a parents versus children. We've had the left versus right. We've had the Guardian versus the Sun. We've had presenter versus presenter with friends like Jeremy Vine who needs enemies in in broadcasting house. You know, it, it is untenable. I thought there was actually three allegations now because the BBC came up with evidence, mm. the Sun came up with a lockdown breach, and there was already the original case. Indeed. There was arguments that the Sun hadn't had enough evidence. Well, I saw the evidence that the BBC had yesterday with the menacing messages. Now, it could well be that there was some sort of extortion stuff, you know, that we don't know the presenter's story. Uh, he, his name will come out because... The pressure is such, but it's interesting, isn't it? And this is why it's bad, why it shows how broken we are as a society, that social media has gone crazy naming people just because they don't like them and think it must be them. That is not a society we, any of us really want to live in, do we, where people are accused totally innocently of this stuff. As for this presenter, it would appear that he's a very troubled person uh, whether he's trying to buy love, whether he's he's trying to, whether it's power, um, but it seems to me that he needs some sort of help because this isn't a necessarily, um, you know, some of the messages they were they were really really quite sad. I know that you're trying to overpower young people, and you, you may be there may be an age gap there, but if you if you read some of those, they were actually very needy. And the fact that you'd pay a stranger £600 to sit and have a cup of tea with them, allegedly. You know, it's, no one comes out of this very well. Um, the BBC, I mean, it, it, it shows how the country splits immediately because the sun broke the story. People like Owen Jones, you know, who gets paid to review the papers and yet doesn't like newspapers. Why does that happen? The Guardian and all these sanctimonious people have attacked tabloid newspapers. But the reality is... What would have happened? You know, Jimmy. Sa we've had Jimmy Savile. We've had Rolf Harris. All these were loved presenters, loved presenters abusing their power. We don't know if this is, uh, there's a power abuse here, but what we do know is it's very unedifying for someone in that position. And I would imagine for some of this stuff that it could be gross misconduct. It could be 
uh, bringing the BBC into disrepute. Well, well, so, so can I just jump in there? Because, sure. because Sorry, th then. there is no evidence that, that what took place was illegal. Also, no. many people use dating apps. So again, if, if, the, if the dating app was with someone in their early 20s, again, not illegal. And so therefore, it's a private matter. I think the bigger concern is about the BBC's handling of this. Now, if you have serious complaints levelled at the organisation, I think many people feel that actually the BBC acted improperly. The fact is, they managed to apparently they have a serious investigation unit they managed to make one phone call one email and didn't follow it up and when you look at the timeline it just doesn't seem good enough it wasn't fast enough and actually if it is this serious the director general should have contacted that presenter yeah i mean we've seen itv have a similar situation and it seems that power survives the powerful seem to be let off you know we've had the Schofield thing where the itv faced exactly the same allegations of not taking it seriously enough the bbc I uh, said they'd learnt lessons from Savile, they'd learnt lessons from previous things with Martin Bashir and the uh, Princess Diana interview. And yet it's clear from how they've handled this that they haven't learnt lessons. Yes, they should have taken it seriously. Did they dismiss it because they were, you know, allegedly working class parents who, who came in with a bit of an unclear story? But by the same token, if a high profile figure ha faces allegations, at the very least, you'd expect it to be strenuously looked at by their employer and it seemed to me they asked one question and and dismissed it so nothing illegal there's nothing wrong with using a dating app as you say the issue is the image of the bbc and the fact that it seems you know if the dating apps are being used uh in uh, in, in a way that would bring the BBC instituted. So, I don't care. What, so, so can I just fin finally, finally, sorry, finally, time sorry. is very tight. Let me just ask you: Is this irreparable? Is is trust in the BBC now damaged beyond repair? I, I believe it is. Yes. Thank you very much indeed, Nigel. Very good to talk to you. That's Nigel Pauley, media commentator.